Hello, everyone. My name is Shirley Ann Higuchi, and I'm chair of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation. This week, we're exploring the lives of the resistors at Heart Mountain during World War II. These young men came into camp as boys, and when they turned 18, they refused to draft until their rights were reinstated. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the story of one of my favorite resistors, Dr. Takashi Hoshizaki, who now sits on my board. See you soon. The Army's 1943 enlistment campaign, combined with the appearance of the loyalty questionnaire, led to the rise of opposition groups, including the Heart Mountain Congress of American Citizens, led by Frank Inouye, who had been a senior at the University of California, Los Angeles, when he was forced into the camp. He met with a small group of fellow prisoners to determine how to protest the questionnaire, an activity that led the University of Cincinnati, to later ban him from campus. This core group would turn into a bigger problem for the camp administrators, particularly throughout the coming year when the military began to draft Nisei men into the camps. Three other Nisei leaders in Inouye's group would also play major roles in the opposition. Kyoshi Okamoto, Paul Nakadate, and Frank Emmy. Okamoto was 55-year-old Nisei from Hawaii, forced into the camp because he lived in California in 1942. His fellow prisoners considered him an eccentric jailhouse lawyer. He was constantly talking about constitutional rights and legal theories challenging the incarceration. Sometime in the second half of 1943, he created the Fair Play Committee of One, a solitary crusade against the government that had imprisoned him. He has endeavored to thwart any effort by WRA to assist the evacuees in peaceful relocation, Camp Director Guy Robertson wrote to Dylan Meyer. Many of the Heart Mountain prisoners consider Okamoto a bachelor and eccentric. They could not understand him or his causes or the growing audience he would later develop among the younger Nisei men. Regardless, the environment remained ripe for dissent as the attitudes against enlistment and segregation continued to harden. The all Nisei units in the Army, the 100th Infantry Battalion and its successor, the 442 Regimental Combat Team, had succeeded on the training ground and on the battlefield in 1943 to such an extent that the Army on January 20th, 1944, suddenly changed its classification of Japanese Americans as 4C, enemy aliens, to 1A. That meant all military-aged men who were physically and mentally fit were immediately eligible for the draft. That decision rekindled the ill feelings inside Heart Mountain that had arisen a year earlier with the issuance of the loyalty questionnaire and the policy of segregating all disloyals at the Thule Lake camp. Most Japanese Americans, including myself, never knew what happened at Heart Mound during the winter and spring of 1944. A small group of prisoners resisted the draft, placing themselves in opposition not only to the government, but also to the Sentinel and many of their fellow incarcerees, and making them the unwanted in both the mainstream and the Japanese American communities. My family never talked about it, and it was only through my involvement with the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation and one of its central leaders, Takashi Hoshizaki, known as a resistor, that I learned about the resistance movement and the strength and moral character Hoshizaki and others had displayed. Kiyoshi Okamoto, the 55-year-old Nisei jailhouse lawyer, had been considered an eccentric nuisance since he first arrived at Heart Mountain but his resistance to the beginning of the military draft brought him newfound acceptance among the younger men in camp. Okamoto and his fair play committee of one attracted disciples and involved it into a fair play committee, which focused on resisting the draft. Director Robertson reported that camp authorities have Mr. Okamoto under surveillance as we think he is somewhat demented and it is hard to tell what action a person of this kind might take. On February 8th, only four days after the arrival of the first orders for young men of military age to report for physicals, the group held its first meeting inside one of the mess halls, drawing about 60 men. The next night, hundreds more appeared in another mess hall. Interested men who had 
profess their loyalty to the United States and express a willingness to serve in the Army, to still be at Heart Mountain and not Tule Lake, pay $2 in dues to pay for operating expenses, including the possible hiring of an attorney to fight the anticipated court battles. Okamoto dominated the first meetings with talks about the Constitution and the right of due process, a topic about which most of the attendees were ignorant. The institution of the draft itself, Okamoto said, made it possible to fight the issue of civil rights in the court. We were fairly unsophisticated, so was everybody else, said Frank Emmy, one of the group's co-leaders. But Mr. Okamoto gave us a real fast lesson in civics and constitutional law. And the more we understood it, the more we realized we really got shafted. Okamoto and the other fa fair play leaders knew, however, that prisoners in the other camps had applied for repatri repatriation to Japan, and they wanted to make sure no one mistook their opposition to the draft on constitutional grounds for allegiance to Japan. Takashi Hoshizaki, now a Heart Mountain board member, graduated from high school the previous year, attended the first meeting armed with $2 his father had given him. At Pomona, he had seen the first signs that something was terribly unfair about the incarceration. I'd had these doubts, he said. I remember what the old Arnisi had said, that we should have protested. Takashi drew from the strength of his father, Kijiro, who had exhibited great strength during the incarceration and before then when he predicted Japan's ultimate defeat in the days after Pearl Harbor. When the loyalty questionnaire came out in 1943, Takashi had answered a qualified yes to question 27, saying he would serve in the military, military only if the government restored his legal rights. His feelings had intensified the following year as he watched hundreds of prisoners who opposed the incarceration be rounded up and shipped to Tule Lake. He said that when this draft ring came out, I said, this is crazy. He disliked the idea of a segregated unit. They wouldn't let the Nisei go into the Navy or into the Air Force, so I said no. He would not allow himself to be drafted from camp. That's the story of the Resisters. Thank you for tuning in and joining us today. And I look forward to talking to you next week when we discuss military service and the heroes during World War II. See you next week.